Hey, good morning, Meeting House Church. Welcome. If you're watching from uh, YouTube, welcome. We're glad you joined us this morning. Um, today is the first Sunday of the month, so it is our worship and prayer Sunday. So we're going to spend some time in God's presence singing and praying together and for each other. It's going to be a good morning. I'm excited about it. Uh, real quickly, um, we have connection cards in the seat back pockets of your pews in front of you. There should be one somewhere in those pews. So if you have any prayer requests or if it's your first or second or third time in Meeting House Church and you want to introduce yourself or write down a prayer request you have or communicate anything, uh, we read those every week at our staff meeting and we pray for the prayer requests. And so that's the best way to get in touch with us. Um, and so we can drop those in the offering buckets at the back at the end of the service. Um, well, like I said, we're excited to be here in worship. I want to start off by reading a scripture from Psalm 100. It's one of the shorter psalms, and this is what it says. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are the people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise, and give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever, and his faithfulness continues through all generations. So as we begin this morning, I want to invite us to spend just a couple of minutes, uh, maybe one minute, just praying and thanking God um, for his word and for who he is for life. Uh, let's just take a minute and kind of breathe as we maybe are carrying some baggage in here this morning. I know some of us maybe have job stresses, some of us have relationship um, struggles, some of us have financial struggles, whatever it is, family, um, or maybe everything is great, but let's take this opportunity to just kind of let us sigh out and just say, God, I'm here for you this morning. You are good. Uh, he is faithful. His faithfulness continues through all generations, the psalm says. So thank him for life. Scripture also says that in him we live and we move and we have our being. And so we're here because of him. We're here for him. We woke up this morning and took our first breath because of him. And so let's thank him for that this morning. Find things in your life that you're grateful for today. And let's begin by just worshiping him in prayer and thanking him uh, for what he's done for us. So just take a minute to yourselves and just thank him and pray and set your hearts and mind on him today. Lord, we come before you this morning and we confess that we need you. Lord, you are God, you are king over everything. Uh, nothing is too hard or impossible for you. Uh, you've been gracious and kind to us, Lord, by giving us life. Um, Lord, just by blessing us. Lord, we, we, we need for nothing really, Lord, and so we're grateful for you. Uh, we're grateful to you, God. Lord, this morning, just open our hearts and minds to who you are. Uh, communicate clearly to us today, God. Lord, we want to worship you in spirit and truth like your word says. Uh, we want to grow into the church that you call us to be. So Lord, just bless this hour. Uh, let it, as we always say, be the best hour of our week because um, we're with God's people together and we're worshiping you. And we love you in Jesus' name. All right, church, let's, uh, let's sing a little bit this morning and celebrate. Would you stand on your feet and sing? worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out God who 
saves We sing to the God who always makes a way Cause he hung up on that cross And he rose up from that grave My God is still rolling stones away There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet Redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord sing praise Come on, sing it again We were the beggars Now we're royalty We were the prisoners Now we're running free We are forgiven, accepted Redeemed by His grace Let the house of the Lord Today, and we won't be quiet when we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet when we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet when we shout. So 
Amen. God, we worship and exalt you this morning, Lord. You give us life. Lord, you have been so good to us. You did, were not satisfied with us being separated from you, but you sent your son, Jesus, to save us, God. So we, we just thank you and praise you for that, Lord. Uh, Lord, just thank you for all you've done and who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can have a seat. Good morning, Meeting House Church. How's everyone doing this morning? My name is Bobby Dawson. I'm the youth pastor here. And I just want to say thank you for joining us this morning for our prayer and worship service. It feels good to be here. I've been gone for the last two weeks visiting family. And there's just nothing like being back home. Uh, before we dive into our lessons, I've just got two quick uh, announcements. Hopefully you received one of these cards when you came in this morning. Um, what we do with these is... We ask that you write down what you need prayer for. And here in a little bit, our ushers are going to co come by, collect them, and then we're going to redistribute them. And we're going to have somebody in our congregation pray for you over these cards. So if you can, just fill down with a prayer request for this. And then here in a little bit, we're also going to be taking up communion. Uh, just so you guys know, these have two little slips. You got your first one, which has the bread, and then the second one, which you pull back, which will be the uh, drink as well. Um, so that was it. So when I was uh, thinking about what I was going to teach about today or preach about today, God's love just kind of really stuck out to me. Um, and we're going to be in John chapter 10 today, but I kind of want to set the scene here a little bit because there's a lot that goes on before Jesus starts speaking. Um, so hopefully you guys remember uh, the, it's the real famous story where Jesus uh, spits into some dirt, makes some mud, and he makes a blind man see. Um, really uh, kind of one of the more iconic moments in the Bible. Um, and the man who was blind was born blind. And so his disciples asked him, he said, was it this man's sin or his parents' sin that caused him to be blind? And God said, it's neither of these things. It's so that God is shown through him and we use him as an example. So Jesus, he came in, rubbed the, rubbed the mud on his eyes, and God said, I want you to go down uh, into the... Uh, pool of, uh, I believe it's pronounced Saloma, uh, and just wash the mud out, and you will see. And so that's what he did, and he started to see. Well, then the Pharisees get involved. And whenever you read the Bible and it mentions, like, the Pharisees, you know something weird is about to happen. And so they pull him aside, and they say, listen, they said, how are you able to see? And so the blind man tells him. He said, Jesus came, put some mud on my eyes, I went and washed my face off, and then I saw. And they said, no, this doesn't make sense. And so the Pharisees, they started to doubt whether he was actually blind from birth or not. So they went and got his parents. And his parents said, yes, this is our son. He's blind. We don't know how he's seeing now. Why don't you ask him? And so they ask him again, and he basically just starts to tell them off a little bit. He basically goes, why are you asking me again? I've already told you, you didn't believe the first time. Why are you going to believe now? And so that's what he says to them. And they decide that they're going to cast him out of the synagogue. They don't want him there anymore because he's sticking up for Jesus. And so Jesus hears about this and he brings the blind man to him and he tells him that he is the son of man. That's what he says to them. And so the Pharisees start asking him questions. And so he says in a way that he is the gatekeeper and that nobody can come in unless it's through him. And they didn't understand. And Jesus perceived that they didn't understand. And that's where we get to John chapter 10. And this is what it has to say. It says, therefore, Jesus said again, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief come in only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come in that they may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not a shepherd and does not own the sheep. So he sees the wolf coming and abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. 
The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. Just as the father knows me and I know the father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep, and I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and the authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. So Jesus is using the example of sheep and shepherd because that is familiar to them. We are the sheep. He is the good shepherd. He clearly states right here in verse 17 and 18 that he's going to lay down his life and that he does so willingly. It is his life to do what he wants with. Because he loves you and I. Because he cares about us. That's why he lays down his life for us. He wants to make sure that we're brought into his pasture. And and when he brings us in and when we're saved, there's nothing that you and I can do that will ever get rid of that. There are many times where people just turn away from God and just say, you know, enough is enough because they get tired, they're hurt, or whatever the reason may be. Just because they do that does not take away their salvation. Because when you go before God and you go with your whole heart and you say, God, I love you, will you come into my heart and save me? Right then and there, your name is written in the book of life for all eternity. There's nothing that can happen or take it out of it. That's the authority that Jesus had. Jesus had the authority where he was going to sacrifice himself on a cross for you and for I. And he was going to raise himself again three days later. All because that's the command that he received from God. Because when he did that, he wanted to make a new covenant with you and me. He wanted to make a new type of relationship. Because before this, all the Jews ever knew was they had to offer sacrifices up to God for their sins. God said, no, I'm going to go away with that. I'm just going to sacrifice my son. And that's the only sacrifice that we'll ever have to make again. Because this is the type of God that we serve. And I just want you to listen to this passage of scripture from Hebrews chapter 8. This is the covenant that God gives us. I don't have it up on the board, so I just want you to listen. Because it is a very impactful passage. And this is what it says in Hebrews chapter 8. It says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with the ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant. And I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. That last piece, when I read it, about brought me to tears. Think about it. He says, I will remember their sins no more. No more. What have you and I done to deserve that kind of love? Where we serve a God who sacrifices his son and we come to him and we ask for the forgiveness of our sins. And he says, because I love you, I forgive you. And I'm not going to remember that anymore. I don't know about you. I've sinned a lot in my life, and a lot of it I'm not proud of, and I remember, but God doesn't. Because when we look at God, and we see God, and we turn away from our sins, and we turn towards God, that's what he cares about. He cares about us continually to grow in him, and to love him, and to tell other people about him. That's what he cares about. He doesn't want us to sin, but he knows that we're going to do it because we're human. It's just what happens. 
And if we go to God and we ask for forgiveness, we'll turn away from that. He doesn't remember it anymore. So here we're going to take up communion, and I want to read a passage from 1 Corinthians. It says this, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant, the covenant we just read about, in my blood. Do this, and whenever you drink of it, in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. When we take communion, we're remembering the body of Jesus that was on a cross, who was beaten for us, who was stabbed in the side for us, who was spat on and mocked for you and for me. And then his blood, that when we drink it, we remember that we no longer have to make sacrifices because he is the ultimate sacrifice and that he took on all of our sins on the cross with him. We take communion and celebrate the fact that Jesus died for you and I, even though we didn't deserve it, because we don't. But he did it because he loves us. And so right now, we're going to give you a minute. If you read further down in Corinthians, it asks us to examine ourselves. And this, a lot of times, can be scary because there's, when you ask God to examine yourself, to examine you and to, and to open you up to, to whatever sins that you may have committed, you're going to come to mind certain things that you didn't know was there. But that's the whole point. Because we need to recognize the sins that we've committed and we need to ask God for forgiveness of those sins. So right now, I just want you to take some time before you do communion and just examine yourself. Ask God to search your heart. And then when you feel ready, go ahead and take communion.
blood speaks a better word than all the empty claims I've heard upon this earth speaks righteousness for me he stands in my defense Jesus it's your blood your blood speaks a better word than all the empty claims I've heard upon this earth speaks righteousness for me and stands in my defense Jesus it's your blood what can but the blood of Jesus. What can wash as pure as snow, welcomed as the friends of God? Nothing but your blood, nothing but your blood.
guys can have a seat. Um, right now, we have a uh, church member who needs some prayer. Um, you may know him. His name is a is uh, AJ Lapina. Uh, he is uh, part of the police here in Middleborough. He's been coming to this church for uh, quite a few years now. Um, he was just diagnosed with cancer. Um, so him and his family really need prayers. He's having surgery on Tuesday. Um, he has a, a tumor in his neck. They won't know the extent of it until surgery, but he is going to have to do radiation after the surgery. They just don't know about chemo yet. So right now what, what we're asking is that you pair up with whoever you came with and you just lift up his family in prayer. The Bible tells us that God, that Jesus is the great physician, that miracles are done. People are healed constantly through prayer. So right now just ask for God's healing. And, and be bold. God tells us to go boldly before the throne. Ask that God heal them, that when the doctors see him on Tuesday, the cancer is just gone. Because God can do that. That is how powerful our God is. And then also pray for his family because this is a scary situation. Anytime someone gets cancer, it can be scary. So just pray for God's comfort on his wife and his kid and his sisters, aunts, uncles, brothers. Just everybody, just comfort through this time. And then I hear after a little bit, I'll just close us in prayer. So please just gather together and pray for him this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, God, that right now that we ask that you work a miracle. God, as, as AJ, he's, he's sitting at home, he, he's getting ready for a surgery on Tuesday. God, I just ask that you put your healing hand on him. God, that you just remove the cancer from his body. God, that it just goes away. God, and that, and that you let his family feel your presence. That they know no matter what happens... No matter what goes down, God, that you're there to bring them comfort and peace and that they can rely on you, God. And God, and I just ask that through all of this, we just continually to praise your name. God, please be with the family as they go through all of this, God, and just please work a miracle and heal them and heal them this morning. 
In your son's holy name, amen. We'll sing a little bit more, guys. I just want to remind you that you, um, you know, we don't have a, uh, a routine that we're trying to stick to. So you guys have some freedom in this, uh, in this time. So you can stay paired up or, or grouped up and keep praying, or you can stand and sing, or you can kneel or whatever. Um, it's up to you. It's, it's your time with God. It's our time as the body of Christ together. So just putting that out there again as a reminder. Um, but we're going to keep singing and worshiping him. And um, you should be getting some prayer request cards during this time as well.
Oh, man. 
mention of your name, King of Majesty. James chapter 5 says, Is anyone among you suffering? He should pray. Is anyone cheerful? He should sing praises. Is anyone among you sick? He should call for the elders of the church, and they should pray over him after anointing him with olive oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick person, and the Lord will restore him to health. If he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. Be urgent requests of a righteous person is very powerful in its effect. So I want to invite you guys to, uh, for a few minutes, gather up uh, in the groups you're in or with your families or uh, with whoever's in your pew, if you're comfortable, um, grouping up um, or by yourself and take that request card that you should have gotten and just spend some time uh, praying for it.
Lord, we pray for all those who are sick this morning. Um, we just we ask for your protection over uh, Meeting House Church. God, we, we pray for the Thomason family. Uh, just help them to recover uh, very quickly, Lord. And uh, Lord, just thank you for being gracious to us. Be with those of us who, who just, who need to rebuild a relationship, who need to, uh, you know, figure out our finances, whatever it is, Lord, there's so many needs, God, and we just, we know that you, um, our Father, who gives good gifts, uh, and as, as Pastor Bobby said, you're the great physician, and nothing is too hard for you, so we just confess our need and um, dependence on you, and we just ask that you uh, would just show yourself faithful to us, Lord, like your word says, um, and just draw us closer to you. I'm not going to cut you off if you're still praying, so um, don't feel like you have to stop, but we're going to leave singing a little bit and celebrating what God has done for us one more time. So if you'd like to join us as we sing one, one more time today. the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. Shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. Sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross and he rose up from that grave. My God is still rolling stones. some good church this morning. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next Sunday.